Hi, I'm Blaise Fairstone. Welcome to 2020 Imaging. Today we're going to go through and show you how to operate the PXS 710D. What you're going to do is start with, start with um, turning the x-ray system on. There's two toggle switches, one in the back, the very back on the uh, bottom of the base, and then one on the bottom of the two head here. And then you go ahead and turn on your computer. Once the computer loads up, the software you're going to be using is called Opal. So you'll see a shortcut on the desktop there. You can get through there or from your Windows. If you do get a password for the computer, which this one doesn't have one, but like the server, the password is going to be um, 1Q2W3E4R5T on the keyboard. That's to get into Windows on the computers. Um, username and password is going to be the username you could always use as admin. Password is going to be 2020 tech. That can be updated, cha uh, changed to create new user accounts. There's different permissions you can set. Uh, doctors can have more permissions than, you know, some say at, a, at logging in. You know, different things to, you know, to give you the ability to delete studies and stuff like that. Um, Simply just click on where you want to type, and down in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little picture of a keyboard. You'll just hit that for your touch screen, and the keyboard will come up. So you just do admin, and then your password 2020 tech. And then to get rid of the keyboard, you just go ahead and hit the button again. Uh, and this is your this is your study list, your patient study list. It's going to list all your, your actual studies. Um, it's kind of your gateway to take x-rays, to pull them up, to do everything really. Uh, so once you've logged in, if you're, we're going to, about to take an x-ray, we have a patient coming in, uh, you'd simply hit the create new study button near the bottom and that'll bring up your patient demogra demographic screen to add a new study. It's going to start with the, always going to start with patient ID because if the patient's already in the system, it's going to automatically find their information once you put that ID in and go over to the next field. It's going to fill it in automatically for you. So John Doe was in, you know, a couple months ago. You put as, as long as you're using the same ID as it, and you want to use the same one as TrackNet so everything matches up uh, and it'll integrate perfectly as long as that ID matches. So we'll do the patient ID here. And then you can go ahead and go down to the first name. You can tab over if you're on a keyboard and mouse. You can tab with this. You obviously you just tab. So you'll have your patient ID, first last name, um, middle initial is optional. Date of birth is required and gender is required. It's going to default to male, but you can change it to female. And then on the right hand side. This, these are the required fields, again, to review patient ID, first, last name, date of birth, and gender. Um, and then on the right-hand uh, right side are your optional fields, um, referring physician, institution name, and you have some others. The referring physician we recommend because when you send a, a CD out, you're, you're the referring physician, you're the referring physician. Because when you, when you burn that CD or send it out to another you know, radiologist or another doctor, you're, you become that referring physician from that, you know what I'm saying? A little bit weird how it works. Uh, people get confused because there's an option for reading physician, but what that's f meant for is radiologists that are going to be connecting through the cloud, logging into your, if you were to be doing that, having somebody else review your images. Not as typical, but that's, a, you know, that's what that is. Um, institution name, you can go ahead and put your practice in there. You'll just, all you have to do is click the add button on the right hand side, type in what it is that you need and it'll stay in there. And it's going to default to the last selected one. So it'll always default and remember. So you, you know, until you're here on, on Thursday or you're here on, you know, whatever days, you'll, then you'll need to change it. But if you're going with the same position, but just keep that in mind because if you forget about that and it is a different doctor and you have it on the wrong one, you know, you'll just want to make sure it's the correct one, the correct position. So after you've done that, you'll click the acquire button. And I didn't put a date of birth in. Mm. So obviously it won't let you go until you've completed your task, your steps. 
So click acquire, and this brings us to our acquisition software. And this is this is the software you'll only see in this room because you can only take extras right here. So the study list you'll see everywhere, uh, and then the viewing software, which we'll get to later, uh, you'll see everywhere, obviously. But this software is just right here. So once you have your pa your patient will come in. So once every once you have her positioned, you'll hit the view on the screen. So left or right foot at the top. You got you have your categories here. So if you're going to do an ankle, you would change the view there. Uh, foot, those are the foot views. So we're on the AP. And the size of the patient too. So if they're a little bit smaller, you can you know bring that down. It'll adjust the technique accordingly for the, the size that you select. That's cool. So once you're ready, yeah, that's all you got to do on the computer. Then we'll. All right, we're going to take this X-ray. So if you want to step out. And what you'll do is you'll hold it down halfway until it's until it says something on the screen. Until it here. says ready, yeah. It takes a second or two, and then you can press. It. Your X-ray comes up on the, the screen there. Um, you have the option up here after you do each view. You can you can do this after each time you take an X-ray, or you can do it all at the end. It's up to you. But there's an accept and reject option at the top here. Mm. Once you hit accept, it saves the image how it is, and you're. You start sending it to the server in the background. So say you're in a room and you, you want to pull it up while they're taking x-rays, you can pull it up and there's a refresh in your viewer. And just to let you know, I would use better collimation too. So like you might be used to film where you know you want to have it wide open or whatever. Um, but with digital, the tighter you go, the better um, penetration you're going to get in that directed area and you're going to get less scatter, stuff like that. So I would, yeah, call, you know, collimate the light a little bit more. Um, up here you have reset, so if you do for some reason change the contrast. If you drag on it, you can adjust the contrast. But it's gonna be it's gonna be contrasted normally pretty well. Okay. Pretty you know where it should be, as long as you're doing everything right. Um, but if you want to reset it, you can reset it. It resets the whole thing as you just took the x-ray. So now you can see our annotations are removed and everything like that. So we can throw those back on there. Yeah. Um, but you can rotate it. These are flipped. You probably don't want to flip it because then you're gonna yeah. confuse yourself, but Otherwise, yeah. And this is one thing I would like to point out is the auto auto shutter. If you can see the pink lines around the outside, what it's going to do is crop automatically to your collimated area. So, if, if this, in the event that it's ever not correct, it's, it's you know cut into the image, it didn't find it. It's good. It's important to have good collimation because then the computer software can find that area and say, okay, here's your here's your actual image. And I'm going to cut out everything else. And then I'm going to process the image in that that area. So, um, if you have a mouse, you can use a scroll to, to actually zoom in and out like that on it. And you can manually make adjustments. So say this wasn't correct and it was cropped in because the collimation wasn't good or the angle was really weird. It's really rare that it happens, but it might happen. So we just like to kind of train people on how to make a correction so you don't kind of freak out what's going on. You're re we don't want you retaking the image unnecessarily. So you'll grab the, you can grab the sides or the corners, bring them in. Hmm. I manually adjust. Once you once you've made your adjustment, hit apply on the bottom left. That's important. A lot of people will forget to do that if you are doing this adjustment. Uh, and then what it'll do is reprocess in that that new area that you've selected. Because if it's out, out in another area and it's you know it's not going to look right, but once you make that correction, you tell it this is oh, where I am. Yeah. yeah. And so once you're happy and satisfied with the image, I mean, like I said, you can just continue taking X-rays because if you have a patient up there and obviously their feet are, and then you can take your AP. It comes right up on the screen. You just tap the next view. I'll probably be doing it at the end once the patient's down back in the chair or in the room. You can sit here and say, okay, you know, put the marker on there or adjust it. Or, um, but yeah, once you're satisfied, you just hit the, the check here. And then if you look on the thumbnail, it's already on the server now. So wow. it's, it does submit and it does its thing and now it's over there. So if you're in a room and you wanted to pull, you could see the study there with zero images. Um, but you can now pull it up. You'd continue simply taking the next x-ray to, you know, any other technician would come over here and hit the next view. Say we're going to do a, a foot oblique, a medial oblique. Uh, you, you do have some options down at the bottom here. Uh, normal, sharp, and soft. Uh, normally you want to stand normal, no pun intended. Um, sharp is going to simply over-process the x-ray try to sharpen it up, but it does become gritty. It's just a computerized thing. Okay, so if I wanted to look at a foreign body, like someone stepped on some things and a piece of metal or glass, this, which one would you use? Well, you, you, you do have the ability to sharpen the view up in the, uh, in the viewing software. So everything is really recommended to do it in there. But for people that do like, you know, certain views on certain types of sharpness, 
you know, which isn't common, that's definitely an option. So you can do sharp, apply, and it'll remember for your medial obliques, for your left foot medial obliques to do sharp from now on. It'll go back to it so you can see how the image looks, you know. Mm. It looks more processed, more like a CR image than a DR image now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let me go back to normal. And then soft, obviously, we'll make it softer. Um, you have your sizes down here, so you have adult and, and pediatrics. Uh, you can, you know, if they're a little bit smaller, obviously pediatrics you can use with children, but if you have a bigger foot, you, know, you can kind of compensate for that, but normally you want to be on the, the middle one uh, for the average person. But yeah, I mean, simply you just, you know, Eddie will select the next view, and then position the patient, take the next one, and continue on. And then once you're done, you can you can do all the all the thumbnails and all the shots that you took, and go through them all. You know, while you're taking the X-rays, you can okay, this X-ray was good, accept it, take the next X-ray, or you can just continue to take them. Patients having trouble standing up there, that's fine. Get all your X-rays done, get them off, and then um, you know do your accept and reject and stuff like that. But once you're done, you just accept it. Um, close out of there open up our study. Your most recent study will be at the top and it'll just keep pushing them down and then you'll have multiple pages. Um, this is your search up here, this white area. Type it in and hit enter. It's going to filter out, show you all the all of your results, kind of like a search result. Uh, if you click on all, it'll bring you know, everything back up. Uh, there is an option down here which I want to point out, add new image. What that's for is if you are calling for another view, uh, say you wanted an extra view, which might be helpful for your, you know, your exam. Or if a view didn't come out correctly, so he took out the patient moved while you, while you're taking the exposure, uh, you know it's blurry. You can add another view to a study. The only case you want to do that is the same day, because you're adding it to this date, date and time stamp. So you don't want to, you know, find the patient, add them from a study that you had a, a week ago. You always want to make sure that's the same day. Otherwise, if they do come in in a week, you want to do the create new study. Uh, to do add new image, you would click on the the, the study and hit add new image. It comes right in here. You can take another X-ray as you need. Right, to. same day, but the next day you, or another time. You yeah, create different new different time. Mm -hmm. Then you want to do create new study. And if I put in this test, and here, where do you put post on? Um, over here on the right, um, you can do study description. Is where probably where you'd want to add it. So you just add like pre app post app. And that will save. So mm -hmm. for it'll other... save in there as an option. Okay. Yep. So as I put in test and. So if I put test in here, and I, and I go to, like I'm going to go put in, because it doesn't know when you're done typing until you're out of the field. So if I just click away, it'll fill it all in, because it automatically searches and finds the patient, fills it in, so it saves you guys some time. Mm -hmm. So now we have two studies. We have test, test and test. <laughs> and then if you look down here, you have a, this is the previous study. I know these are within, you know, the same day. Let's say this study was done a week ago. Um, it gives you the ability to compare two studies. And I can do that in the room as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's something we'll, that we'll go over with you. But I mean, as far as everything in here goes, we're, that's, that's most of everything. Importing CDs, burning CDs, stuff like that. The biggest one is going to be burning CDs for patients. You need to charge them your 25 bucks or whatever you want to do. Um, but you would highlight the, the patient, hit CD burn. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, everything's going to come up just as it is. You just yeah, pop a CD in. A, lot of the, a problem that a lot of people have with burning CDs is they'll put the CD in and go to hit burn too quickly. Windows is still spinning it up and it's got to read it and see that it's a blank CD and people will try to burn it and then they'll get a failed message. Yeah. Call us and say it's not burning. You got to give it a, a, until that thing comes up, which is depending on the computer, usually pretty quick. So we'll um, click on her, we'll do CD burn here. Now this is going to give you the option. Everything down here, you can leave default, but just to kind of go through it, um, you're burning to your CD drive um, with your viewing software, so it's going to put our software on there to let them pull it up. This has to be on a Windows computer, it's, it's Windows based. Um, CD label is going to be the patient ID. If you select the hard disk only option, it allows you to put it on like a flash drive or an external hard drive or something like that. So it's not going to, and it'll, it'll prompt, if I click on this, it'll prompt where you want to save it to. Yeah, it's going to show you all the available, all the studies that were taken on the patient. It's going to default select the one that you select, you highlighted. And if you want to add the other ones on here, you would just click the checkbox up here. So say you want you burn all of them. everything on the CD. Um, and one very important thing to the software is making sure everybody logs off correctly. This is one of the biggest support issues that we have. 
Um, so the log off button at the very top right, you'll see it in here. The web-based version and the workstations, you'll see the same, the, the same log off button. Um, the reason that you want to actually use the button and not just close it or close the Internet Explorer mm -hmm. browser, it'll, it'll normally it'll automatically still log you out, but in the event, um, there's certain cases where it won't, so if you close it out and it's not directly talking to the server, it's going to think you're still logged in. And you want, um, what happens is then it thinks you're logged in so many times, you go to log in and it's going to say you're logged in too many times, um, you know, you're not going to be able to get into the software essentially because of the concurrent amount only lets you be in so many for the licensing. In a nutshell, it's important to make sure you use the log off button, make sure everybody's aware and stuff like that. So I close it, I actually log off and not just close, you know, close the software out. All right, now we're gonna go through the training at the server. You'll see a shortcut on the desktop called Opal Web. we will go ahead and open that up. And then the login is going to be the same as provided. Admin and 2020 tech. You're going to hit a compliance message once you log in. Um, so now we're back at the study list. This is the web-based version. So the only um, the time that you're going to see that the software version is in the acquired room. So yeah, you'll simply open up a study by double-clicking on it. And this is your viewing software. To kind of go through in a, in a nutshell, here's all your tools are all at the top. Um, this is your main menu here, the 2020 logo at the very top left. So it's kind of like your file system, so your file settings, stuff like that. Not as typical to be in there. Uh, you reset image state, which we'll come back to. I'll show you some modifying the image a little bit. Uh, you can invert the contrast, um, rotate, of course, your image. You have flip, two different flip options, vertically and horizontally. Uh, one to one view will essentially zoom it in a lot. It's your actual pixel data. It's, it's kind of like computer terms for this is the actual size of the image. Um, so it'll go in as far. So once you start getting past this point, then you're, you're going to start seeing more pixels and stuff like that. But, but it is, it is um, you know, it is optional to view it even more. The next one is going to fit it to the window. So you'll just click fit image to window. Um, these three here magnify, zoom, and pan. You can go ahead and select these as you're using the using the software. There's a shortcut. Uh, there's a shortcut that you can do, which is on the right-hand side over here. You'll see a graph or measurement. You can you drag up and down on this. It'll That's zoom cool. in and out without actually having to use the zoom tool. So as you'll notice up here, this will change as I click on this. It automatically changes to it because you're zooming right now. <coughs> and then pan. A shortcut to pan is using both the left and the right and the left, the left and the right mouse clicks at the same time, and it'll pan it around. So press both of them together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird to get used to it because you would never really click both buttons at the same time, but that'll pan. And so alternatively, you can click on the tool and pan it, and click on zoom and zoom in, and then pan it around. But it's obviously easier to stay. Your default is your magnify, which is you know a square magnify line. And then you want to zoom in, you can just zoom a little bit and pan without having to keep sliding the tool. So most people you'll want to use the, the shortcut uh, saving time. Um, to change the contrast of the image at any time, you'll just right click and drag. Uh, you can <coughs> left click and drag up and down, left and right. Contrast and movements. So you're you're essentially changing the histogram, the, the amount of levels that you're showing on the image. So whatever is most useful for you. I mean, if you, you get to a point where you want to go back to the beginning, you just would reset image state. You do want to keep in mind as you set the image here, once you close out of the software, it is going to save it in that state. However, your full image is always there, so your full pixel data is there. Uh, so whatever you decide to do, you could always go back to the original by adjusting it. And there's different options where you can get back. So we can reset up there. Um, one useful option that doctors seem to enjoy is the uh, bone enhance and contrast enhance mm -hmm. on the very right here. Over here, you, uh, to come back to this, you have annotation edit mode, which is good, you're going to be in. Um, do not click keep last created annotation active. It's a mouthful. Uh, what that does is it'll, when you do an annotation, say I want to do an arrow annotation here. Once I'm done doing it, it ends it. If I were to unselect this option, it's going to allow me to keep doing it until I actually click on the end annotation button up here. 
So normally you'll probably want to do one annotation one time, which is the normal. So have you unselected? You would just click on it again to keep it active. It's a little bit weird. It's kind of backwards. How do you remove it? Yeah, you get rid of it. All these annotations? Yeah. Oh, they're the, they're there forever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You could you could. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> um, you can. Once I'm done doing it, you can highlight it. Once it turns red, you can just hit delete. You could also right click and do um, right click on an annotation and do delete annotation, or you can do delete all annotations. Mm -hmm. Clear them all off. So you can see the difference between, you know, I mean, the image looks good once you start getting real, you know, really in there. And, you know, it's just helpful <coughs> to, you know, enhance it further. Um, so, so, yeah, some of your basic annotations are up here. Arrow, uh, measurement, just a simple measurement tool. Um, up here at the top, you have your markers. If you want to, you could add your markers on and acquire while, you know, Eddie's taking the x-rays. Or you can add them on here, uh, just like that. But so of if course, I forget to mark it. Yeah, you can throw it on. <laughs> so I don't know what it is. I can mark it later. Yeah, but this is this is kind of an afterthought, and it's an annotation, so it's only going to be an overlay. Okay. 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 Um, text annotation up here is simply just you're going to put some text if you want to make a note, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can make Let's notes see. there. Way to no more Yeah, there's a way to get it to if you want to do like a new line, you know. Okay. Yeah. Hit hold control and hit enter and it'll give you another line. So if, if you want to put a bunch of notes on there or something like that. Cool. Shutter box, so you're gonna click on one corner um, of where you want to shutter it off and then another. And it's it's not a really it's kind of a crop, but mm -hmm. everything. Keep in mind everything we're doing in this viewing software is just an overlay. So right, we always have our original thing. image, yeah. So we can always clear it out, go so back. How do you to the clear beginning. it out? You could you could adjust this. You can grab it, delete it, make an adjustment, or again you can just hit delete all annotations and it'll clear everything out. Our magnify here is similar to the shutter box. You'll you'll click on one corner and it's 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 similar to your your magnify here without right. having to hold and click it. So you can kind of keep that in a position. Um, and again, you have your enhance, and you can do your enhancements. Um, auto window level region of interest is what that stands for. It's mm -hmm. going to essentially ch adjust your contrast into the selected area. You're not going to probably use that as much, but just so you know what it is. The next one is um, a perfect circle. You can make a perfect circle, um, shutter, ellipse. So just some different annotations. Um, down here, you have your different views. Now we're just looking at one view. We, let's let's do that and bring in uh, another image. So patient priors, this button will be here if, you, if the patient does have a, another study. It doesn't have to be a prior study. Healing, yeah. Yeah, so we'll open that up, and I think this is the same view. But. And if you see what I just did there, let me do that one more time for you. you probably not that one a little quick. <laughs> see, once you have your study open, you'll hit your patient priors. This is going to open up um, the box to show you all the other available the other available studies. You'll just simply highlight one. You can keep bringing as many studies as you like into the, into the software too. So let's double click on that. And then now we have it loaded up down here in the bottom, bottom left. So this is our study we're in here. We click down here. So I'll push that one up into its kind of its folder or its home. And now we have our two studies for this. There are two images for this study. So I can go side by side here by using these options up here, uh, top and bottom. Have a lot of the news on the screen if you like. So we'll go side by side. If I click back here, this will push this back down just like that. It's only gonna, ever going to show you one study images on the left hand side at a time, so you're not confusing all these different things going on. And then you could double click on one, or you, the, the best thing to do is to drag it in. And you can obviously it's the same image, but. Yeah. And then once you're over here, you can zoom in on this one. Um, if you're over here, same thing. You can work on this one, go back to this one. The red dotted line is around your currently worked image. Uh, one kind of neat thing of this is you can double click on one of these images while you're in your multi-view and temporarily bring it up closer. It'll, it'll go back to your single view, but you're, you're still in your multi, but it's kind of layered back. 
Mm -hmm. So if I double click on this, you'll still see that we're in our side-by-side -side view, but we're currently just viewing this one, just this image right now. And you can see how the dotted line is green. If I double click, then it'll go back to my side-by-side. -side. A few other things we have are, um, you can print the images, which isn't very practical, but yeah, it's, you know, some, pay, some people no, like. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you can do that, which is, I would recommend inverting it before you print it. Mm -hmm. um, you can click on paper print, print image. You can right click and um, add image to print queue. And then you would go back to, to here, paper print. And it'll be in your queue. It's still going to be, still going to have a black background though, so even if you invert it. Um, it's going to print what you have zoomed in there too, so if I were to reset this, go back here, and I can print, print it, let's go and clear it out. It'll look just like that. Um, header is going to be your practice name if it was selected when you're taking the x-ray. Uh, footer is some of the patient's information and stuff like that. Up at the top right here, just so you have an idea what this stuff does. I mean, it, it kind of shows you once you scroll over it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of self-explanatory, but um, auto open next study, if you highlight that and you close this, it's just going to open up the next study automatically. Um, again, it's more used for radiology. Uh, one more feature I want to show you is the status, um, which if you notice in the study list here, I think it's all over here. You have a status here, unread. It's always going to say unread until you, you change it, or we can do it. So, so this, this is going to say mark the study as read. To use our mobile version of the software, I'm mobile. Simply log in. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at 2020imaging.net or you can call 866-734-6234.